Hello, YouTube. I am your host, the Crimson Warrior. You've activated my trap card. And now that I have that out of my system, I wanted to talk to you guys today about the fact that there are no free wins in Yu-Gi-Oh. I am absolutely sick of hearing players complain that their losses are just because they got locked out or just because of the turn one build a board. Now, while it's very true that the turn one build a board is becoming a big problem, 50% of your games most likely are coming down to skill, are coming down to the grind game, where you and your opponent are going into an exchange-like state where you, every single interaction starts to count. And I'm saying this because I feel that I used to be a lot more competent of a Yu-Gi-Oh player. I used to, with my Black Wings, my Shadals, and my Ritual Beasts back in those format, I felt much more confident and I did a lot better as a player in the format because I understood the cards and the interactions, what was going on, the main decks and how to fight them. I was learning all of these things over the course of the two years that I played while in high school. and. It really led to me getting a grasp of the game and feeling like I was in a lot of control over my game states. Now, fast forward to 2019, two years, maybe a year after I dropped out. I don't remember how long I've stopped playing. Whenever Lynx became a thing, I, uh, I stopped playing. So since then, until a month, two months ago, I have not been playing. And... Now I play Salamangrates, and I have access to all of the cards a Salamangrate player could want. I have my Triple Phantasme, I have my Triple Signet Minings, the deck runs exactly the way I want it. And as a player, I am averaging 2-2, like a bad player most of the time does. And I'm not even complaining about this, it's because I don't know the cards and in interactions. I don't know my matchups. If I go up against Sub Terror or uh, what's the other trap deck, Altergeist, if I go up against either of those two, I have no idea what I'm doing. If I go up against Sky Striker, I have no idea what I'm doing. If I go up against a more skilled Salad player, I'm probably not going to win that game as long as they don't have Phantasmes. Phantasmes is kind of a little bit of a blowout against another player, but even if, even if, if they have Artifact Sanctums in their side, they can pull the game back to their, their side of the favor real quick. So yes, even though the Build-A-Board is a problem, even though you are getting locked out of maybe 50% of your games, a lot of everyone's games are coming down to these nitty-gritty interactions. And I say this because almost every time at the tournament, time gets called, and interactions get nitty and gritty and everything, and it's really the skills of the player that make this game. It's really the nuance and what you know you're doing. And I'm saying this because... Even if you're on a budget, even if you're a player who can't spend a lot of money, you can still win, and you can still figure out things to play in this game on a budget. You can still go buy a triple Salaman Great structure deck and build a semi-decent salad deck off of that. Now, you may want the minings, you may want the phantasmes, but there are skilled replacements if you know your interactions and you know what weaknesses you need to start covering. Now, if you don't understand these things, even with access to your playset of Phantasmes and your playset of Synet Minings, or whatever expensive card you want, like a couple formats ago in, I think, Zoo format, when Solemn Strikes were $90 because you needed to strike the Zoo monster or else you couldn't play the game. There are still other cards 
that you can play as long as you understand the game and as long as you understand card interaction. Everything in this game comes down to skill. And sure, there's the games that you get Lanceyed. Sure, there's the games that you fight the $600 Thunder Dragon deck and he gets his absolutely bonkers board twice in a row and you can't do anything. But a lot of your games, if you're going 2-2, you are losing because you are not making the correct choices in your duels and you could really do yourself and those you duel a massive service by starting to learn your interactions, learn the game, get better at what you're doing, instead of blaming your losses on cards, on situations, on your opponent, on decks, on entire archetypes. It's like, I don't hate Sky Striker because I lose to it constantly. I wish I could fight it more or knew a Sky Striker player who I could play against so that I could start to get better against the matchup. I feel the same way about Thunder Dragon, except for I really don't feel like I need to fight Thunder Dragon at all because my locals doesn't have it, so I don't need to account for it. On the other hand, I am constantly fighting other Salad players, and I'm constantly fighting Orcist players. So I'm starting to learn these matchups and interactions. And as you start to do that, mathematically your percentages of winning as a player go up slowly over time. And sure, you can get the lucky regional top, or sure, you can get your lucky locals top, but playing these small mathematical gains on your skills are statistically skewing the graph in your favor to continue winning the game. And I say this as a player who's lost a lot of their skill, a lot of their knowledge. I no longer am comfortable in the meta I am in. I don't know even what Altergeist does, like decks of past formats. I don't know what Zoo does. All of this stuff, like, I'm blind to so much now because I wasn't playing the game when I used to feel so competent as a player. And what I want to bring to you guys is a way to to get that feeling back for yourselves as well, because I know that all I need to do is to play these games, to learn these interactions, and I can start statistically improving my skills and start winning games. Heck, the only... Uh, the only tournament that I've ever top topped, like top two, I got to top two and then I got defeated. I used a relinquish deck as a meta call at my locals because the format was so heavy and I noticed everyone was using boss monsters, these boss monsters that were immune to destruction, but they couldn't deal with targeting and they couldn't deal with non-destruction removal. So I used relinquish. And because people were putting all of their resources into making these monsters, because people weren't accounting for targeting and non-destructive removal, because the meta at the time only cared about destruction, I managed to get top two understanding the interaction of Relinquish taking my opponent's boss monster when I go second is probably hugely detrimental to their game state because sure I go neg 3 oh, neg 2 summoning relinquished but then I make them go neg 1 so really it was uh only a neg 1 for me to summon relinquished I still have two cards in hand to do something with and most of the time they were already they probably had the same amount of cards or less because of how many resources they were using to get into these boss monsters. And that was only because I understood card interactions. With the piddly relinquished deck that I built together with three preparation of rights before it got banned way before, not way before, but before Necroz came out and everyone was worried about that. But, and like when ritual support was finally just starting to get consistent. And that wasn't a multi hundred dollar deck this was like a hundred dollar ritual deck triple manju or uh yeah triple manju just 
all kinds of random stuff that a kid player had access to. And it's like, you can win games. You can win tournaments off of these limited card pools if you understand the games and its interactions. But if you don't understand the games and its interactions, you are not going to win even with the $100 cards, even with the several hundred dollar cards. There's no such thing as a free win, and you cannot buy yourself to victory. And take this from a player who went from having no disposable income to being able to get any card that I want, really. Like, I can get anything I want as long as I budget enough for it, because I save money, and I save my income, and I budget... I can buy whatever I want. Now, I have a hard time justifying ridiculous purchases, especially if it's not going to start winning me games, but even with the access to the Phantasmes, to the Cynets, sure, I don't have the Boral Sword, but I plan on fixing that soon. Um, but even with access to all of these things, I'm going 2-2 at Locals like most of your average players and I could be doing so much better, and so could so many of you guys, if you just took responsibility for your games. If you could just be like, yeah, you lost. If you could just accept that, and move on, and figure out why, how to change it next time, what you could do in your deck building process to accommodate for this, like... A huge part of winning against the meta, especially as a rogue or anti-meta player, is accommodating for what you're going to be playing against. What are the top four? What are you expecting to fight? What's what's the most prolific at your locals? Like, I would probably have a great time at locals running my Necroz deck if I understood its interactions. And because the two main decks at my locals are Orcust and Salad. And if you Unicorn lock a salad deck, or you Vanity lock a salad deck, let's go to game two. It's over. Like, unless you got the, uh, the rage instantly, you're, you have no out to my vanity, so the game's over. Now, the reason I'm telling you guys this is because I want all of us to do better, and making excuses is not going to make you feel better in this game, and it's not going to contribute towards your next victory. So I really hope that you guys can take this advice and synthesize it and start taking responsibility for your game states, realizing when you start losing control of the game, realizing how you could start doing better at the game. All of these things are things that that you need to do if you want to expand upon your base as a Yu-Gi-Oh player. And I share this because we all want to get better at Yu-Gi-Oh. Everyone who plays it from the most casual of casual running your Dark Magician deck to the most ultra-competitive dude running your Thunder Dragon deck we all play because we want to feel good at something and because we want to be part of this community. So why not do your absolute best? And also, it's just such a rewarding feeling when you beat a player who's trying to do their absolute best. When you come up and you fight me at locals with your deck and you win, I did not let you win, okay? Even when I duel kids, and this is controversial, I do not let them win. I play sloppily against kids so they have an easier chance of winnings if their deck are is built for around, you know, actually beating your opponent. If their deck actually has a has an idea that it's going for and I get sloppy with my resources, that kid has a genuine chance of winning, and any other opponent... I fight, I'm going full bore against. I don't care if you're running the absolute worst Crystal Beast deck in the world. I do my best as a player always because when you get your win from me, you earned it. And for me, as a hyper-competitive player, that's what Yu-Gi-Oh! is about. For 
I earn my wins, you earn your wins, and we all feel good at the end of the day after sitting across the table from from each other and playing this game. So I just wanted to to give you guys this to, to chew on to think about. I really think that a lot of players could really improve their game states if they started taking responsibility for their games and I really enjoy making these conversational videos for you guys so go ahead and give it a like if you enjoyed it comment if and tell me what you would like to see more of if you like these conversational videos if you like uh, more deck videos um, it didn't seem like you guys might like the live duel much so I'm gonna try to stray away from that a little bit but what kind of content do you want to see uh, subscribe if you want to see more and hit that notification bell if you uh, want to see me every time I post because it ain't stopping now. Peace, guys.